Hello, this is Father Randy Sly with another installment of Day by Day, where each day we take a look at a reading from Holy Scripture found in the Daily Mass. And today is Thursday of the seventh week of Easter. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Lifting up his eyes to heaven, Jesus prayed, saying, I pray not only for these, but also for those who will believe in me through their word, so that they may all be one as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they also may be in us, that the world may believe that you sent me. And I have given them the glory you gave me, so that they may be one as we are one. I in them and you in me, that they may be brought to perfection as one, that the world may know that you sent me and that you love them even as you love me. Father, they are your gift to me. I wish that where I am, they also may be with me, so that they may see my glory that you gave me because you loved me before the foundation of the world. Righteous Father, the world also does not know you, but I know you, and they know that you sent me. I made known to them your name, and I make it known that the love with which you loved me may be in them, and I in them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. We have just finished up the high priestly prayer of Jesus prior to his passion, death, and resurrection. And uh, this is basically on the way to the Garden of Gethsemane. And in this high priestly prayer, we come to a point where he is not only praying for those disciples that are with him then in uh, that time, but for all of us. He says, I pray not only for them, his disciples at the time, but also for those who will believe in me through their word. This takes us up to the present time, that the high priestly prayer was prayed for all of us that would believe in Jesus through the ministry of the apostolic fellowship, those who were with Jesus. And we are a part of that. We are the fruit of that particular proclamation of the gospel coming forth from the apostles over successive generations. And what Jesus is showing again here is that we are called to participate in the divine love of the Godhead, the love that the Father has for the Son, the love that the Son has for the Father, a perpetuating love of self-sacrifice, self-giving one to another. We're to be caught up in that, that we too might live our lives in that kind of love relationship, not only with God the Father and God the Son, but with each other, all participating through the, the divine work of God the Holy Spirit. And so we are being caught up into this beatific vision, into this beautiful uh, love cycle that exists between the Trinity. And that's where we are called to live our lives. And one of the things that he says here, he says that they may be brought to perfection as one. And I've talked about this in other passages, but the word for perfect <clears throat> In fact, uh, you know, St. Paul says, be ye perfect as he is perfect. The word perfect uh, there and here in the word perfection is the word in the Greek teleos. And the word teleos does not mean without flaw, but it means to operate according to the original design. I think it's very critical that we understand this, that they may be brought to perfection means that they might be brought to the point where they are living their lives as their creator intended their lives to be lived. And that's what the word perfect is all about. It's living according to the, the intentions of the design through which something is made. For example, uh, my car has a lot of miles on it. My car has some dings. My car has some paint scratches. It's got some paint missing from the bumpers. But you know what? It's a perfect car because it gets me where I'm going from place to place. And so even though some of us may have some scars, may have some uh, life that is still uh, evident in our, uh, the way that we look just in terms of weathering the tides of time, uh, all of that being said, that we can be perfect as our Heavenly Father is perfect, 
when we're living according to the designs and purposes that he has for us. Most important of that, of course, is that we live in relationship to Jesus Christ and through him a relationship with God the Father. That as the mediator of our new covenant, that he brings us into a participation in the divine love of the Godhead, that we might live in that realm. And that might be the love with which we love one another, but also express love to the world so that the world can know that we were sent by God. A powerful prayer, a beautiful prayer, and one that we uh, were able to reflect upon as we anticipate Pentecost coming in just a couple of days. So may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts together be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Well, until tomorrow, may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.